actually in the office with real people for a change. Madam Chair, it looks like you have a quorum present. All right, great. Um, welcome everybody. 131 on the dot, looks like we have enough folks here. Um, pulling up my agenda, sorry. All right, um, welcome everybody. We are, what is today? Today is the 19th of March. Um, we are um, kicking off our third CBTA Regional Prioritization Subcommittee meeting. Uh, let's start with, I guess we, we're good with the virtual meeting statement. We don't need to read that, so we'll move on to roll call. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll start with Chesterfield County, Ms. Smith. Here. Chair Walker. Here. Puchon County, Mr. Coleman. Here. Hanover County, Vice Chair Vidunas. Here. Henrico County, Mr. Yor. Here. Ms. Meidler. New Here. Kent County. Hi, Sharon. New Kent County, Mr. Stouter. Here. Ms. LeDuc. Powhatan County, Mr. Shardine. Here. City of Richmond, Ms. Clark. Here. GRTC, Ms. Torres. Here. Plan RVA, Mr. Parsons. Here. Mr. Ariel. Here. DRPT, Mr. Brule. Here. Ms. Dubinsky. Here. EDOT, Mr. Mann. Here. And Mr. Rublet. Here. Thank you. That concludes the roll call for attendance. Thank you. And I can start if you have a quorum. Awesome. Thank you. Um, wow, we have a full house. Um, that's awesome. I will roll on to any amendments to the agenda real quick if anybody has anything they'd like to add. <clears throat> um, hearing none, I can roll on to, oh yeah, yeah, uh, approval of the March 5th uh, meeting summary. Can somebody um, make a motion for that? I'll make a motion, this is Barb, I'll make a motion to approve the meeting summary. Thank you. And we need a second, right? Sharon Smidler, second. Thank you, Sharon. And then we can all affirm verbally, right? For the motion? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Okay, everybody in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Um, moving on to item three, public comment. Nicole, did we have anything submitted? No, ma'am, we did not receive anything. All right, good. Um, let's move on to the bulk of our meeting. I'm going to share my screen. Mm. And I need to move this over. All right, so we are, oh, I don't like this mode. <clears throat> I forgot how to do that mode where it doesn't, oh. okay, we'll have to roll with, you guys are looking at the wrong screen, bear with me. Let me do it this way. Yeah, right now we don't have the screen active yet besides what, the participants what do you see now just the lineup oh well, that's not good oh i have to hit share lord have mercy <laughs> share there you go that's it you see stuff oh lord yep. have mercy i'm gonna work off of this screen you guys because i don't know how to do the it's doing that presentation thing um Okay, let's get it started here. Third meeting, today's goal. Um, last meeting, we had a really good discussion on project eligibility. We talked about constraining projects to um, that were eligible for the regional pool uh, for CBTA funds. Uh, we'll circle back 
um, based on the discussion we had at the last meeting, we'll circle back on some of those outstanding items. And then the goal, the number one goal today is to take second half of, of our time. Again, we only have an hour. The second um, half of our hour to open the discussion on evaluation measures. So we've got our pool of projects that we're defining per the code. We've got to be able to measure the benefits for those um, projects and want to kick off the discussion on our approach to how we evaluate and determine benefits. Um, so if I circle back and chat, if you could, or Nicole, um, let me know when we get to maybe 20 minutes after. So I wanna make sure we get enough time to talk about scoring or evaluation measures. Sure thing, um, 220? Yeah, thank okay. you. Yep. So on regional eligibility, we had consensus. We went through major project types and we had consensus on limited access roadway projects were all in. Where we left off was relative to arterial roadways we had a debate about principal and minor. We settled on principal and minor arterials, both being eligible, but we, I promised to follow back on um, consideration for a threshold, uh, ADT threshold for eligibility. So I wanna circle back with that. Um, we had coordinated with VDOT, so thank you VDOT for forwarding on ADT information. Um, for all of the principal and arterials in the member lo in the lo uh, in the region for our member localities. And the first summary box here is principal arterials. And you can see by locality we have the number of routes, that's actually just extra info, but um, the number of principal arterials, the max, the min ADTs on those principal arterials and then average just for another data point. Um, and you can see that by locality and then you can see it for the region across all lo localities. So we talked about, there was is there a way to constrain um, the arterial projects because we don't have enough money to go around. And so for consideration based on this information, you can kind of see this list, the principal arterial list is sorted um, based on the max ADTs. Um, and there is a, I would call it a, a natural break point um, between 35,000 a day and let's say 15,000 a day. Um, so I'll throw it out to the group for principal arterial, a threshold of 30,000 a day um, vehicles a day. And I'll park that right there and same kind of thought process for minor arterials. For minors, I think the threshold again should be conservative and constraining because of the dollars. So looking at the max volume, and these are again from VDOT's 2019 published counts. Um, uh, establishing a threshold again of 30,000 a day for minor arterials. Um, and then applying that to intersection improvement projects. Let's, uh, if we can settle on the intersection needs to be two arterials, principal or minor, but two arterials and one of those legs needs to meet that volume threshold. Um, any initial thoughts on constraining the list of arterials based on what you see here in terms of ADT? <clears throat> Madam Chair, this is Diana. Yes, ma'am. Um, just initially, I think that the 30,000 may be too high. Okay. Um, I know when we looked at um, some of our data, um, you know, we were thinking somewhere like 10,000. Oh, um, and I know, yeah, and I know that that's definitely lower than the 30. But with that, what does, um, what does it say for some of the localities 
that don't meet that threshold that are in the region? So, yeah, when you look at the data, it looks like everyone has, Charles City, unfortunately, is, doesn't meet, would not, does not have a principal arterial. Um, and they do, they would not have even a minor arterial. So they wouldn't have a regional highway project that would be eligible. Um, Town of Ashland also did not show any principal arterials, um, but they would have, I believe it's Route 1, they, they would have um, arterials that would be in play um, on the minor arterial side. Um, you would have Powhatan and New Kent, Goochland, would not have anything in play on the minor side, but they're in play on principal. So I think, unfortunately, Charles City, Charles City would be the one with that wouldn't have any um, arterials that would qualify. Everyone else would have an arterial that would qualify. And, and I just think that, um, yeah, I just Actually, think that too, even sorry. when I think about, you know, as we, as we define the regional, um, Oh, I'm sorry. Am, am I breaking up? Can you hear me? I can hear you. You're breaking up, but I can. You're. I can understand you. Okay. What, what I was just gonna say was, uh, you know, it, it may be that there's some project on a roadway that has a economic, you know, economic development impact that could, you know, I guess potentially vibrate through the region <laughs> for those <laughs> localities and. Um, I just feel like we kind of, we may be shutting them out of, of, of the process, just particularly for this item. And I don't know that, you know, that would be a good thing or not. I hear that. Um, and one thing we did consider or that, and I apologize because I had this all animated so it wouldn't be too much information at one time, but I can't get it out of this mode. So we did consider um, allowing for, if you have a minor or principal arterial that is under the 30,000 today, but you can project out over some time frame. I threw, we threw out 20 year time frame, but if you could say in the future it's going to grow up to be X and then it would be above that volume, then that could account for economic development projects um, and increasing volume of, over a particular roadway that may not be currently above 30, but it would, it's projected to get there over the next 20 years. Um, that was something we, we did, I, I throw out to the group for discussion. Hey, Chessa, this is Barb. Yes, Barb. Um, I, I think it's good to think about how we opened up the last meeting and remind everybody that the pot of fund is limited Mm -hmm. So we don't want to end up with a giant long list of projects that are eligible and we just don't have enough money to put a dent in that list. So it just makes sense to me to, with our first cut of this process, to think about constraining it to a certain degree. Um, which unfortunately means not every locality is gonna have a regional project. Highway project, yeah. Right, right. Or linear, yeah, roadway type project. Yeah. Madam Chair, this is Todd. Yes, Todd. Um, I, I agree with Barb. I think we do need some parameters so that we can have some constraints to limit the number of projects. Um, my, my first reaction, I think 30,000 ADT 
um, may be a little high. Um, okay. But I, I, I don't, I'm not prepared to recommend a, a number until kind of go through, for example, Henrico has 16 principal arterials and what, 42 minors. So I'd want to kind of put some uh, specific roads to these numbers to kind of mm -hmm. digest that a little bit. And I, I suspect maybe some of the other localities would as well. Um, a uh, question on clarification to your third bullet where it says um, intersection of two arterials, at least one leg with ADT greater than 30,000. Did we settle oh. on, is that the intersection of uh, a principal and a minor, two principals, or could it be the intersection of two minors? Oh, good point. I didn't think about two minors. I was thinking about two principals, principal minor, but I didn't think minor minor. I, yeah. think at, I think at a minimum, we, it should be intersection of a principal and a minor. I don't, I don't, I'm not suggesting we do minor and minor, but we should at least yeah. look at it. Good point. I, I agree with that. That's, this is Barb. Good catch. Yep. I can circulate the spreadsheet if you want to go in and it's all sorted by locality. You can go in and that circulate. Would be that would be helpful. Okay. Any other thoughts on the ADT thresholds? Just initially, I'll circulate the spreadsheet for everyone to kind of digest further. <clears throat> yeah, so one thing that might uh, might help is I'm looking at the uh, VDOT has a functional classification map. Mm -hmm. This is available online. Um, unfortunately, there's not a filter for ADT, but if we could uh, work with somebody, maybe somebody at VDOT and remove all the roadways that don't meet the threshold, I think that would give uh, everybody a pretty good sense of what uh, would be eligible, at least in terms of highway projects, uh, because we could show those that are principal and minors that meet those ADT thresholds, and you could also see the intersections. So yeah, maybe that's and that, something that we can bring back to the group or even between meetings uh, distribute to the group. Absolutely. And that's actually on me because VDOT also provided, um, I've got to create a, a file for them to dump the files, but they gave me that, the layers. So okay. yeah, so I, I should be able to, we should be able to have that from a visual standpoint by the next meeting. Yeah. Hey Jess, um, this is Tom Coleman from Gucci. And just to follow up on Joe's comments, just I would wanna be careful. We did a major thoroughfare plan update where we uh, altered the functional classification of a lot of our roadways. And that may not, that won't be re fully reflected in VDOT's functional classification map. So I just, I just wanna, I would just wanna make sure that you could use the VDOT functional classification map, but you could also use a fun functional classification identified in your own major therapy plan. We could, just thinking through that, if we, if, if a local had um, a, a different classification in their, in their therapy plan counter to what VDOT has, it would still true up when you got to the ADT part. Right, I mean, yeah, I mean. Yeah, that only addresses the population but, question. It doesn't, doesn't affect the ADT aspect of it. Yeah. Barb, you were gonna add? Yeah, yeah otherwise we need to go and revise our comp, our thoroughfare plan to have everything be a principal arterial and a minor arterial. <laughs> Yeah, it'd probably be best just to stick with the VDOT classification for this purpose, just for consistency. Yeah, it's... Okay. Um, so it sounds like threshold, I'll circulate the data, we'll come back and we'll show it in a visual way of what would not qualify. We'll, I'll leave it at 30 um, at this point in time and we can circle back 
and keep munching on that if as folks digest information. So Madam, um, Madam Chair. Yes, Todd. So I know I don't want to jump ahead on this, but maybe food for thought to the group is as we everybody kind of goes back and, and looks at their major minor arterials. But I mean I, I think maybe one way to look at it is at it is if if you have a, an arterial that already has um, a lot of lanes to handle the capacity. So your your volume may be high, but you may not have any issues that drive a need for a project. You don't have sufficient congestion as opposed to maybe a lower volume arterial that does not have sufficient capacity. So you may have delay in congestion or safety issues on a lower volume arterial, whether it be principal or minor that warrant improvements. But I think if we're artificially low or artificially high on the threshold, you may, you may have prod a good project on, a, on an arterial that's not gonna qualify just because of our screening uh, criteria. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tessa? Yes, yes, Bob. I, there, yeah, that does make sense. Maybe we should be thinking about uh, the lane capacity and taking that into consideration. Okay. So I, 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 I think the focus is not to, you know, we don't want to create too many, too many projects, but we also don't want to neglect the ability to fund a project on a road that, that is artificially cut off just because it doesn't meet a volume threshold when, you know, maybe it can't because of the congestion. Yep, I'm, I understand that. Mm -hmm. Jessica, this is Dirana. Yes, Dirana. Um, yeah, I think that Ty made a good point um, when he talked about, you know, if there are capacity issues on existing with low volume. And I do understand the, the need to constrain um, the number of projects. But I, I still think that, you know, just as I just think about, you know, the city of Richmond and what what we would consider regional projects, again, being um, where the state capital is and some of the roads that impact it. Again, I don't know if ADT needs to be the determining factor as many of our major thoroughfares with the 30,000 threshold wouldn't even be eligible. Um, and um, I, I just think that uh, a, a lower number um, should be considered and whether or not um, it'd be considered today to not continue to move forward with showing 30,000 um, and then still providing a, a map and we look at it and decide. Um, but again, I can't, I can't agree with the 30,000 threshold. Okay. We can put a place, we can put in to be determined and, and continue to discuss. Again, if we just all have to find a consensus on where that line should be drawn and we're getting, we're working on that, we'll get there. Just keep in mind as we look ahead to scoring um, and then that'll play into some of how we, how we decide to score projects and evaluate benefits. And yeah, it might work, can, yeah. It yeah, might work out where you were, yeah. So if we have a big, if we're constraining our, trying to constrain our project list to limited access projects, we'll have a chunk of those, a lot of those. Um, and then we're gonna be picking out uh, evaluation measures. You're gonna have projects that are gonna score, have lots of benefit, have lots of costs. So maybe lots of benefit divided by cost, it comes down some. You have, um, projects that may have small amount of volume on it. So it's not gonna pull as many benefits, but it's cheaper. So it may move up some, and it may wind up that some of those lower volume projects eke through the scoring process and get funded out of the regional pot. So I, I think we can figure out a way to constrain. It just sounds like we need some more to do some more work. 
Um, but I, I hear everybody on not quite wanting to commit yet on a number. So we will get some more information out to the group um, and reconvene on that. Um, new alignments, unless anybody else has anything on thresholds, it sounds like we, we need to munch on that some more, but I'll move on to new alignment projects. Um, I think the locals can, if you have a new alignment project that you want to a fund with regional CBTA funds, try that that you justify that based on, you know, they expect how it will function if that's supported by your thoroughfare plan, projected ADT on that roadway. Um, we can talk about again, does that need to be above a certain threshold? Um, and to support your case, if there's a way to estimate the benefit of the new alignment pulling off a you know certain amount of volume off of a, a principal or minor arterial that could go into making a case for a new alignment. Um, I'm not. I'm definitely open to discussion on how we handle new alignment projects. <clears throat> Are all new alignment, should new alignment projects be constrained as well? Or are they all, they're not all regional, I'm sure. <clears throat> Thoughts? Madam Chair, this is Todd. Yes, sir. So uh, I, I was um, digging through the, the uh, process that Northern Virginia uses um, for their regional authority, which uh, I think predates uh, smart scale a little bit, but one of the measures they use is, is um, and I think it applies to, to new alignments, um, is access to regional activity centers. Um, so mm -hmm. maybe that's kind of a path we could look at in, in terms of if it's a new alignment that, that either improves or provides additional access or, or any access to a, a, a regional activity center, then maybe that has some merit. That's a good suggestion. Others, how do others feel about that one? Supporting regional activity centers as a eligibility, a support for eligibility for new alignments. Just that's Barb. Yes, Barb. I would still think that the road needs to be of a certain functional class. You know, like a collector to a regional activity center. Okay. You know, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. I think it makes sense to stick to the arterials. Madam Chair, this is Todd. Yes, Todd. Um, in response to Barb's point, I. I understand that, but um, keep in mind the state functional classification map. If, if it's a new alignment, a lot of times it may not even be on on their classification until it until it exists. Um, That's true. So you can maybe defer to the local uh, uh, comp or functional classifications, but in in some cases. Um, that may not always align because sometimes you're playing catch up based on uh, economic development with, with those plans. Chessa, this is Barb. Yes, Barb. So maybe it is uh, something that you would put on the locality to make a case. Just, yeah, yeah. Justify, make a case. Yep. Localities are. Localities will be, for new alignment projects, localities will be responsible for um, a narr supplying a, a narrative as to why essentially that project would should be considered regional and justify it based on expected volume, functional class, activity center, yeah. And, and yeah. Madam Chair, this is Todd. Yes, Todd. I, I think maybe in combination those things would 
address Barb's concerns that, for example, if we, whatever volume threshold we land on for arterials, if we apply that to this, then that may filter out something that would maybe otherwise end up being classified as a collector just based on those volumes. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Hey, right. Chessa, this is Chet. I got one general question. Sure. Uh, is, is all of these, are all of these eligibility criteria following the clarification that it is, the project is included in the long range plan? We never had that discussion. Is that a base requirement? And then we're fine tuning to, to weed out other projects? So we can have that, Please. have that discussion. <laughs> um, I'll throw out for the group my, my take on long range transportation, having that be a requirement. When I think through it, and I can be, correct me if I'm wrong, but the long range, you want your project to be in the long range plan if you're gonna use federal dollars, right? So um, the authority money, if it's wholly authority money, that's local, local money. But if you're gonna use it to leverage other sources of money that would be federal, then you would want it to be in the long range plan. So I, I'm, inclined, I'm inclined to think that you don't need it to be in the long range plan to have to as a criteria, but it wouldn't hurt because if you wanna leverage and pull federal monies later, you wouldn't be held up having to modify the plan. To add it, Chessa, okay, let me add one thing. Comment? Oh, 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 okay. Oops, Who's sorry. first? No, you're fine. I don't see the hand thing because my screen's off. Sulab, you wanna? Yeah, so even if the project is not funded by federal funds, yes. it has to be in the long range transportation plan if it is needed for conformity. So if it requires a air quality conformity, then it has to be in the long range transportation plan. And I think most of the bigger projects would require it to be uh, in the conformity list. Okay. Hi, Karen. This is Diana. Hi, Diana. Hi. Could, but couldn't a project, I mean, be, I mean, is there like an a, a amendment to the long range transportation plan for projects? Yeah, if it's not in there, then you would have to amend it, right? Yeah, if the project triggers conformity, then it has to the LRTP has to be amended. Madam Chair, this is yes, Todd. Todd. So, I I understand uh, Chet and Sulab's um, ask, and and I think I I think I agree as long as we're not saying it has to be in the constrained plan. Because I think as long I think we recognize that that's going to be a limited list so there may be projects that are um on the unconstrained side of the the, the project list that uh, may end up being something that uh, locality seeks uh regional funding from cbta so as, as long as we have that flexibility and then there may be the one-offs that something comes up after the development of a long-range plan and and there is a need to to include and to seek funding and that would involve an amendment to the LRTP. Obviously that's not something any of us desire, but I, I don't think we should preclude a project as long as that amendment process could, you know, follow the course of action and, and include that project on an as need basis. Hey, Chessa. Yes, Barb. Um, if it's, if it's not in the constrained plan, we're not running it for air conformity. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So, but if again, if it's funded through local or private funds, even those projects, even though those are not those are not in the constrained list, those would run in conformity. So we have done that in the past. Regionally significant. Yeah, regionally significant. By the, and that definition is different than what we're talking about here. So any, any road widening, any interchange modification, um, any extension for arterial, 
that would, <coughs> that would um, trigger conformity for sure. I, I need to be convinced that a locally funded widening project must be in a regional long range plan. I feel like in the past, there have been road widening projects done by, or a new alignment, let's say, done by developers that aren't in the long range plan. So I don't know if I, someone's got to convince me that they have to be in a long range plan. Madam Chair. Yes, Chet. I think the point of the regional 35% pot is to do those types of projects. Um, at least we talked about this before. It's the intent of the code. It's just how, how it's interpreted. So um, from the TPO's perspective, if there is, we're talking about a long range plan that is defined by a broad set of what is regionally significant. I think what the CBTA priorities committee, this group is doing is narrowing that list down so that you can reasonably think about the available dollars and what can be spent. If there's a project that is in this list that's not in this list, then I've got a problem because we haven't done the work as a TPO and attack to define all the projects that are that should be considered. So I, I, I guess I'm just trying to understand why how is how is there a, a project that can be on the CBTA's list that isn't on the TPO's list? I, and I'm just I'm just trying to to understand where things are, are, are headed. Chessa, yes, Barb. So, when you're doing the long range plan, this go round, you're including the CBTA money, CBTA local, CBTA regional transit. Yes, that's the approach. So we would have a constrained list for CBTA regional. Madam Chair, if I could offer one other comment, similar to the. Oh, Go sorry. ahead, Mark. There I'm sorry. Fine. I'll come back to you, Chet. Go ahead, Mark. Yep. Similar to the discussion about the potential need to ensure that the long range plan is consistent for a regionally significant project, we need to make sure that the tip and stip are also appropriately updated. Uh, not that that has to be a criteria. Certainly, it could be something that is amended, you know, uh, at, at the right time. But as we're talking about long-range plans, we should also be thinking about tip and step as well, for the same reason. So you're saying that a hundred percent CVTA project is going to be in the VDOT six-year plan? Not the SIP, the STIP. Yeah, I know, but the SIP feeds the step to me. This, the tip is the obligation document. The six-year plan is the allocation document. Absolutely. Um, but from a for a regionally significant project, it has to be included in the step. Barb, let me back into it this way. How do you, do you see a downside to requiring it? Requiring a project to be in the long range plan? It's just the bureaucracy of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Others? Sounds like we've got more folks. Hey, in, in. Go ahead, Barb. I do. Um, Chet's last point about um, this versus this. Just the region and the long range plan should be capturing all the stuff that we're doing in the region. That makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. I'm just concerned about um, having a project that needs to move forward. And are we still running air conformity now that we're non-attainment? Yeah, due to the court case, I think we still need to do that for 1997 standards. So, mm -hmm. 
just, but it's like air conformity light. Yeah, it's it's light. We still we won't model those projects, but we still need a list of all the projects. Yeah. So, so Madam Chair, this is Todd. Yes, Todd. Um, just for point of clarification with Sulab. So, did you say that if there's a, a project that's under the the local funded project list that's in the LRTP, that 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 is included? Uh, if, if it's determined to be regionally significant, that is included in the modeling? Yeah, it, it is. We have done that in the past. And um, in the last uh, long range transportation plan, when we did the conformity, uh, we had a lot of projects, um, even uh, new interchange projects in Henrico County, which uh, uh, wasn't in the constraint plan, but was uh, there in the local private list. Those were added in the model for the conformity analysis. Okay, so so that satisfies that need. So yeah, maybe the the only, I, I guess the only change that would happen is if if there's something that's on that locally funded or it's not in the initially in the constrained plan that um, a locality or someone seeks regional funding for, then maybe it's simply a matter of the uh, a resolution of support from the region saying that the, the um, constrained long range plan would be amended to include that project if it is in, if it is in fact funded through CBTA, which may not be a highly likely scenario, but it, it could potentially happen. All right. I'm not sure where we're settling on requiring long range plan, but it sounds like there's support for it to be included. I think I hear more in favor than against. Is that correct? That's the this way Tom it's Coleman. supposed to be. Okay. Yes, Tom. A point, point of confusion for me, because <laughs> now we've introduced the long range transportation plan to this conversation, and we're talking about eligible projects. Well, based on the conversation, it sounds like to be eligible, it must be in the long range plan and it must be an arterial and it must meet these thresholds. So it seemed like those projects are already predefined. We wish we'd, we would need to be having this additional See? conversation. <laughs> I agree with That's that. That's a wish list. Go ahead, Barb. Or, I think, I'm sorry, uh, that was Dirana. <laughs> I'm sorry, hold on, Barb. Go ahead, Dirana. Yeah, I, I, I was, I was <clears throat> getting that notion too and um, what Tom said, and I wasn't sure whether or not the, you know, I think staff has described the, the long range transportation plan list is kind of, I guess, untethered versus potentially reality in sometimes. And so, um, and we, 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 we put in, and try to include, of course, as much as, as we can as we look through our plans and projects. Um, but again, I'm not I'm not sure that I agree with. I think that I could agree with this in the long range transportation plan, or um, will be amended to be included in the plan. Could be um, acceptable to me. I'm with you on that, Mrs. Barb. <clears throat> Barb, did you, was that your comment or you? That yeah, that, that if it isn't in the long range plan, the plan will be amended to include it. Yeah, okay. Madam Chair, this is Todd. Yes, Todd. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Um, <laughs> All right. So I agree. Okay. Projects <laughs> need to be in the long range transportation plan. If they're not, it'll need to be amended. Good. And then we proceed with our eligibility discussion to further constrain. I don't think that's what we're saying. What are I we saying? I think we're saying <clears throat> we would do we would do this regional CBTA regional eligibility. Mm -hmm. And if a project was selected and not in the long range plan. We demand the long range plan, so it's in there. Oh, 
I mean, okay. That is the same but different, right? It's the same thing. Well, it's not, we're not gonna, we would not say your project isn't in the long range plan. And until you're, you amend the plan to put it in there, we'll, we're not gonna think about it. We're gonna Move let forward. any project, let any project be considered for CVTA if it, re, if it meets our CVTA criteria. Right. And if, yeah. And if it okay. is selected for funding, then we'll make sure it's in the long range plan or we amend the long range plan. Thoughts on that suggestion? Madam Chair, this is Todd. Yes, Todd. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, the, to test point, the hope is it will be in the long range plan. Um, so this is kind of a, a stop gap measure. If, if something comes up that it is a priority for the region to fund through CBTA and it happens not to be, then if the decision is made to fund it, then the region agrees to add it. But that would not be the, the, the normal expectation. The normal expectation is the project would already be in the long range plan. I agree, Diana. Okay. All right. Well, our hour goes by really fast. Barb, were you about to I was going to say we got to move on. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, moving on. Um, and we may, yeah, we probably won't get through everything. That's okay. Um, eligibility, real quick, just circling back on bike ped edits based on last week's discussion. Regional trails in, capital trails already built, so that's off the table. We're not going to build spurs and say that that's eligible based on our last discussion. And then for rail and transit, basically limiting the regional funds for leveraging or local match to combine with other sources to fund those transit and rail projects. That's what we had discussed last meeting. Let me know if I'm not tracking right on those edits. <clears throat> Anybody? Madam Chair, this is Todd. Yes, Todd. Um, yeah, I, I think that captures what I, I recollect. Um, point of a clarification under the bike ped. Um, so is is the where you have listed Fall Line, East Coast Greenway, is, is that the extent of the expected eligibility or is that just uh examples lot? right so for example there's this talk of the three notch trail or whatever it is and maybe that also aligns with the james river heritage trail which is a east west extension of of the capital trail that would go through uh the city um henrico goochland and or hanover um so that would potentially be a regional trail. So we we don't want to limit it to only you know the two listed. Okay. If ever I can put um, examples and clarify that that's not the only list. Yeah. That, that yeah. Go ahead. I'd say once those alignments are official, then those would be included once they have some conceptual study in behind. Okay. I, I agree to that. Okay. All right. Very good. So 10 minutes. I don't know that an hour is going to quite do this group enough with how much we have to get through, but we are working through stuff. So um, good discussion on eligibility. Going to move to evaluation measures. So take this last 10 minutes to kind of throw out an idea, get everyone thinking, we'll circle back next meeting. So per the code, we've got to come up with a, a process to prioritize projects. It needs to be based on benefits that are you know, quantified and that can, and then also consider cost. So smart scale, everyone's familiar with it. It's been vetted 
to kingdom come it's got pros and cons to it but it is a it is um it is very familiar and already established so if we can work with it um we should and so smart scale uses these six factor areas and scores project types based on 14 measures that you see here um throwing this out again to get people thinking and to get feedback and and see what everyone's mind is at in terms of scoring projects one of the one of the concerns with smart scale that I've heard can be that you're comparing while you're using the same measures across all project types, you are comparing apples to oranges within a particular measure. So you'll have all the different project types by measure are normalized against the highest score and competing against different project types. So to kick off the discussion, CVTA, we have an opportunity to come up with a revised or come up with our own prioritization process. And I'll throw out to the group, consider scoring projects by project type. So figuring out what measures are most applicable by type, score each project category based on those measures and you will end up with a ranking by project type. So you'll have a list of highway projects that are ranked by PED, regional that are ranked, et cetera. TAC could then take those scores and make a recommendation to fund to the authority. And I'll throw the, I throw this out here as an idea. What that does is, for example, we are all very familiar with Fall Line Trail, right? Everyone's saying that that's a regional project and that there's support for it. It doesn't score well in smart scale. The authority needs to figure out a way to make that happen. There's probably people who have that position about fall line trip. It doesn't score well in smart scale. But if it was sections of it were competing against the same type of project, you could see, okay, here are the top highway, here are the top bike ped. And what that does, it puts onus on the authority to fund what they feel are the, are the priority projects in the region. That is one thought to get the discussion going. What was, it worked well for the I-81 corridor improvement plan. Now, mind you, that I-81 corridor, there were 106 projects that were identified. They were all of the same type. They were all highway projects. So it made sense that they were able to condense down and just look at the top three factors or measures that gave them enough difference to compare projects. So they, ex they were able to exclude projects that didn't give them a clear distinction. I mean, exclude measures that didn't give them a clear distinction or required a lot of information from the localities to provide like economic development. So what they did was for, because again, they were all the same type of projects, they focused on safety, congestion and accessibility. So they had one safety measure, one congestion measure and two accessibility measures. And then they weighted them and scored and ranked based off of just those three measures. So we could do that same thing for CBTA. We can streamline the process. We can, if we can determine what factors would give us enough difference to be able to compare projects of the same type, it's apples to apples. Um, and you don't have issues of different project types when normalized against another project type, not completely, not recognizing all the benefits of that project type. So this is again, just a initial starting point for consideration. And I can be very quick because so we don't have a lot of time left. As an example, 
regional bike pit. I went and pulled all the fall line trail applications, right? These are just the raw benefits for each of these measures. We could go through and evaluate and say, okay, congestion, you can see delay, it doesn't score well, that's out. Crash rates all over the place, that's out. Accessibility scores well. Environmental economic development, we can talk about whether those are in or out. Land use scores well. So, I mean, we could go through by project type and try to figure out which measures make sense and kind of go from there. So that's a lot. <laughs> that's just an idea to get us started. Um, we only literally have three minutes left. So um, we can just pick this right back up at this point at the next meeting since we ran out of time. Um, yeah. Matt, can I offer a couple closing thoughts? Sure, go ahead. First, um, first, excellent job on everything that you presented today. It is a ton of information. I'm wondering, um, y'all might not like to hear this, if we should be meeting on a weekly basis, keep a little bit more continuity, and mm -hmm. given um, the length of these discussions, uh, I'm not sure that we're going to get to our goal if we don't do that. That's one thought. An another thought, just kind of circling back to the beginning of our uh, discussion um, about uh, the universe of projects, so to speak. Maybe just a homework assignment. Um, disregarding the um, eligibility factors that we have discussed, just kind of take that out. I would be interested to see what e each um, localities or agencies top three, what they would call regional impact projects in their, in their locality or within their agency. And it would be interesting to look at those and then compare those to the discussion that we've had to this point, just to kind of see where we are. And the one thing that's really, um, that I, I mean, it has torn me um, because we, we are so programmed to really think about our own locality and, and kind of what's in it for us. But this piece, the 35% piece is really what's in it for the region. And, and it's hard um, to really look at it that way, but I think we, we really need to look at it that way and think about these projects as, what are the regional impact projects? What are the projects that the average person on the street, if we said that we were to make this improvement, they say, wow, you've really done something to help us out in the region. And everything that we've talked about um, is an important project. I mean, when we think about every project that's in the LRTP and, and that we submit for through the various funding programs, they're all important, but the, the idea here is is really trying to constrain ourselves and limit um, because we do have um, limitations on what we can accomplish. And we can always expand, but I think it's important that we come out of the gate, we meaning the CPTA comes out of the gate strong and makes a, a statement to the public and say, you know, look, look what we were able to accomplish um, with this new funding program. So maybe we can, Shessa, if you agree, uh, maybe we can put that assignment out there for the three projects. Is everyone okay with showing their top three cards to the world? I mean, I think we're good with and that. Again, irrespective of what we talked about in terms of eligibility, if you could have your, your pick, these are our number th three top regional impact projects. I say that regional impact projects, what would they be in your area? And then the, the, uh, the other thought about meeting once a week. Hey, Chessa, this is Barb. Yes, Barb. No, those were, that's great. Those are great. <laughs> um, I'm wondering though, if the top three, should it be the top three projects that we th think in the region? Like not the top three, just from Chesterfield, because then I'm still doing my Chesterfield thing. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what, I don't want to speak for you, Joe. Is that what you- well, Actually, I was thinking in our region, but I, I like the thought. So, um, yeah, 
top three in the region. And, and I do agree that we probably need to meet weekly if we can pull that off. <laughs> yeah, we do. I mean, we need to meet, we either need to meet weekly or we need to get to a point where we just hunker down and have a workshop some, or in bank, you know, I, I don't, one hour chunks is really hard to get consensus on a lot of these pieces that we have to get through. And I like yeah. being able to hear stuff, walk away, think about it, you know, do what people are going to do with the ADTs between now and the next meeting. So like a workshop, I think would be hard for people to yeah. react to stuff on the spot necessarily. Madam Chair. Yes, Todd. Uh, yeah, I agree with what Barb said. We, we do have some homework between now and the next meeting. And I assume you're gonna provide this um, this presentation or at least the, the, the um, prioritization rollout you did here for us mm -hmm. to, uh, Ruminess on, um, mm -hmm. so I think plus just based on on schedules, I think it's going to be hard to schedule another meeting between now and the next scheduled meeting for April second. But if others are available, I'm certainly available to have a longer meeting that afternoon of the second to maybe take a deeper dive into this at that point. That would be good if we could get folks to commit it a two hour commitment because it is a lot. And this is just one. I probably have five other <laughs> ways of, I mean, this was just the intro. So if everyone can, can we look at calendars now or in, can we extend the April 2nd meeting to 3.30? Yeah, we'll just, <clears throat> Joe, you're good. Uh, should we go down the list or let's see. Maybe anybody who can't. Um, yeah, there you go. All right, we're gonna roll. We're gonna extend that meeting. Looks, do we need all the, the subsequent meetings as well to be two hours, right? Yeah, okay. So we'll get that meeting updated and I'll circulate this PowerPoint for folks to start munching on evaluation measures, as well as some of the other info we talked about. It's tough, <laughs> but I but it, I do appreciate everyone participating. We, that's what we need to, to get where we need to get. So good discussion today. And I appreciate everyone being agreeable to extend it, our future meetings to two hours. We'll be on the lookout for some materials come with your ideas next on the second and it's gonna get interesting so <laughs> hey chessa one one note before we we hang up i wanted to recognize rhonda russell's comment in the chat that oh please because um, she I wanted to look at she wanted to go back and confirm the adt stuff too so okay i think that's that's pretty uniform across the board good okay i'll circulate that all right appreciate everybody we're four minutes over We'll see everybody on the second. Good discussion. Thanks. <clears throat>